Hey guys, Mitch here from Retro Stitch Gaming, back again with another gaming video. I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're a fan of RPGs like me. Some of my favourite games of all time are RPGs. Stuff like Skyrim, The Witcher 3, Final Fantasy 9. I just love RPGs. I'm sure all of you guys do who are watching this. The hundreds of hours that you can sink into them, how you can really lose yourself. And the 360 had some really good RPGs. Stuff obviously like Skyrim, like I just said, and the Fable games, which are really good. But... In this video, as you can see, I'm going to be talking about five awesome RPGs that you might have missed. The 360 did have some really good hidden gems, especially RPGs. A lot of stuff that, like I said, people probably did miss. So, without further ado, let's get into those games. First up, we have The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. I'm pretty sure every man and his dog has heard of The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. One of the best games ever, in my opinion. Won numerous awards the year it came out. But a lot of people hadn't actually heard of the series before that. And obviously this is the game that came before for the Xbox 360. You could also play it on PC. Um, after completing The Witcher 3, I sunk hundreds and hundreds of hours into that. Did all the DLCs, I could not stop playing it and I just didn't know what to do with myself once I finished it and I just wanted more of that story and that world. So I instantly went out and brought this game and sunk numerous hours into this one as well. It's a brilliant game, obviously it's not going to be as good as The Witcher 3 because that's a lot newer in gameplay and stuff. But it holds up really well and it's a really solid and decent game. And yeah, I sunk hours, loads of hours into this one as well and then the first game's really good and I also then went and read the books because I just loved this series so much. So if you did miss out on these previous games, they are still definitely worth going back to and playing. You obviously play as Geralt of Rivia, one of the few remaining witches in this world, which are basically monster hunters for hire for anyone who didn't know. The game takes place almost immediately after the first game, and an assassin is taking out many of the kings from the different northern kingdoms, and Geralt is wrongly accused of being a king slayer and must track down the true assassin to prove his innocence. The game takes place over a number of different locations and can have various different events and outcomes depending on the choices you make throughout the game. It has a really good combat system in our opinion, as well as all of Geralt's awesome abilities and potions. It's a really nice looking game and a great experience. If you enjoyed The Witcher 3, this game is definitely worth going back to for a playthrough. And even without the amazing third game, this would still stand on its own as a very solid and enjoyable RPG. Next up we have Lost Odyssey. This is more of a traditional style like JRPG, all turn-based battle systems and the levelling up's all very similar to that sort of thing. It's made by the people who uh, made some of the Final Fantasy games as well, so you know you're going to get a good RPG if it's made by them. Never really hear people talk about this game, which is such a shame as it's really good. It's got four discs as well to this game, so it's a really long game, it's really fun. The graphics look really beautiful, great visuals, great soundtrack, great battle system. It can be picked up for next to nothing and it's definitely worth checking out guys if you've not played it. The story follows Kane, one of a select group of immortals who have lost their memories. The game features many staples of the genre such as turn-based battle systems and random encounters. The game is set in a world in which a magical industrial revolution is taking place. While magic has always existed before, it's suddenly become much more powerful in the last 30 years or so, building up to the start of the game, which has affected society greatly. Whilst before only a select few could use magic, now, because of the magic increase, two great nations have used it to create new and powerful weapons of mass destruction. Like we said before, if you love classic JRPGs, then this game is 100% worth checking out and can be picked up really cheaply nowadays. Next up we have Kingdom of Amalur The Reckoning. This game is also available on the PS3. It was originally meant to be an uh, MMO but turned into a single player RPG in the end. It's a brilliant game. It's the only game made by the company that made this. And the lead designer from The Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Morrowind, uh, he was like the main designer on this I believe. So it's got some really good like RPG pedigree behind this game so you know it's going to be pretty decent. You can sink hundreds of hours into this, and yeah, I definitely recommend picking this up. It's also, like, really, really cheap. You can get it for next to nothing, just like near, near enough every game on this list. As the game begins, you discover that you were recently killed, and that you are the first person to have been successfully resurrected by a contraption known as the Well of Souls. 
The game features five distinct regions, four playable races, noble human, dark elf, light elf and nomadic humans, and three classes with 22 abilities per tree. A big difference from most RPGs is that you start almost classless so you can sculpt your very own unique class. The combat system works based on timing of button presses, similar to action RPGs with occasional quick time events, similar to what you find in God of War. The style is like a mix of God of War and Oblivion. Unfortunately, the company that made the game didn't make any others after filing for bankruptcy. The game's really cool with loads and loads of hours of gameplay and is another cheap game to pick up. Now is such a great time to collect for the 360 with so many amazing games being available for next to nothing. Next up we have Blue Dragon, another Xbox 360 exclusive. It's a really classic style JRPG and has some really nice and charming anime style graphics that we absolutely love. It feels like a like callback or a love note to classic JRPGs, the sort of thing you would have found on the PS1 or the SNES, some of those really epic games. Reminds me like visually wise of something like Chrono Trigger or something like that. But yeah, this is definitely worth checking out. And it'd be a great place to start for someone who's not played many RPGs in my opinion. Taking place in a fictional open world environment, the story focuses on five friends as they travel across the world to confront Nene, the evil ruler of the Grand Kingdom. The game follows the traditional role playing design based on exploration and turn based combat, which I've always loved. The game is probably pretty basic compared to other RPGs of that time, but I think that's what they were going for, and it works brilliantly. And it's an easy, nice RPG to play, and would probably act perfectly for a gamer new to the genre. Also, a fun little fact, this was the first 360 game to make use of multiple discs, spanning three discs in total. Last but certainly not least, we have the amazing Tales of Vesperia. This game is absolutely incredible. We love everything about it, from the amazing combat system, the really beautiful, colourful graphics that wouldn't look out of place in a modern day anime. It's the tenth instalment in the series, I believe. If you've not played any of the Tales games, I suggest you go do it. They're absolutely awesome. And if you don't have a 360, this has recently got an enhanced edition released for the PS4, Nintendo Switch and Xbox One. So there's no excuses really not to pick it up if you're one of your modern day gamers. But yeah, absolutely awesome this one. Definitely, definitely check it out. Vesperia is set in the world of Turkalumares, which uses an energy source called Blastia for Just all its for needs, record, including creating protective barriers around its cities. Well, the story focuses on Yorak, a former Imperial soldier who forms a guild called Brave Vesperia to aid Estelle, a noble woman, in pants on a mission. As they explore the world, Brave Vesperia are challenged by factions that have different plans related to the abuse of Blastia resources, and Yori is forced to confront his former friend and comrade. We absolutely love the battle system through the action orientated liner motion battle system, bit of a mouthful, which plays out quite similar to a fighting game and takes place inside an isolated battle arena. You control one party member while the AI controls the rest, which can be pretty annoying sometimes but what do you expect from the AI? It's always annoying. But don't let that take away from what is a really fun and interactive battle system. Like we said the visuals are stunning and look like something straight out of an anime. In our opinion, this is probably our favourite in the Tales series to date and we highly recommend trying it out as well as the other Tales games if you haven't. So there you have it guys, 5 awesome RPGs for the Xbox 360 that you may have missed. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and maybe subscribe to our channel for more similar content like this where we'll be going through many of these games that we've got. Um, hopefully finding new games for you collectors out there to pick up or play if you're looking for something new. Hopefully you did find something new from this video. If not, I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. And thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.